Today I'm going to show you how to create this procedural tiger stripe texture. This is just a black and white or color texture which I've then put a hair particle system on top of. So I'll show you how I did that. To set up our scene I'm going to get rid of the cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change this entire middle area to my shader editor and put that material that was on our cube. I'm just going to put it on our plane and I'm going to hit end to get rid of that shelf. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport and just make this a little bit larger so we can see what's going on a bit better. Zoom in and go into rendered mode and if you want you can turn off these overlays as well so it's a little clearer what we're looking at. I'm going to start off by moving this principled BSDF out of the way and bring in a wave texture. While it's highlighted I'm going to hit control T and that's a node wrangler shortcut so if that's not working for you just make sure you have node wrangler enabled just in the preferences here. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's coming out of object and going into that mapping node as well and let's just see what that looks like. It's all these vertical lines. I'm going to bump the scale on this down to 1 so our lines are much bigger. And I'm going to bring in a color ramp and just place it on the noodle right afterwards. I'm going to set the black to 0.5 and the white is going to come down to 0.6. This has made our lines a little thicker. It looks like it's pretty much equal amounts of black and white. I'm going to take this distortion value and turn this up to 10. And we can see it's created these interesting wavy patterns. Then to add a little bit more of a noise kind of influence here, I'm just going to put this on the uh, line right after the texture coordinate node and put a mix RGB right afterwards and plug object into color 2 as well. We're going to set this scale to 40 and we'll set the factor to 0.98. So it's just kind of a little bit of a fringe now to the edge. So I wanted to break up these lines somehow and initially I wanted to do this with a noise texture just kind of have half black half white areas coming through and just doing different uh, you know versions of a wave texture but I found a different way that worked a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to start off by duplicating both this wave texture and color ramp with control shift D so that they remain attached to this mapping node. And I'm going to change this phase offset to uh, 15. There's a lot of different values that'll work but this value here I'll just show you is basically just a little offset of that top one. This next part comes from one of Arendale's videos. It's a small part of the node setup for his knitted materials and it's just to create kind of a diagonal sawtooth pattern that goes up and down across the image. I'm going to bring in a vector math node and just change it to scale. We're going to plug object into this top socket here. Then I'm going to bring in a separate XYZ node and just connect these. Let's look at the X output of this separate XYZ and I'm going to bring in a math node. Put it right here and change this to multiply and change this value to 2. We can see now instead of negative 1 to 0 to 1, it's now negative 2 to 0 to positive 2. I'm going to duplicate this and multiply, put it right afterwards and change this to ping pong. And if we change this to 0 0.5, we can see it creates these four symmetrical sections. I'm going to duplicate this one more time, change it to add, and I'm going to take the Y output and connect it to that second socket of the add node. And we can see this sawtooth pattern with these straight lines going up and down. Next I'm going to duplicate this add and change this to fraction. And now we can see this pattern going from black which is you know zero to white which is one in these uh, you know now these all diagonal symmetrical lines. And if I duplicate this multiply and put it here and change this value to one I now have three controllers. This first multiply changes the skinniness of the overall pattern there. This ping pong changes the size and extension of these triangles and then this second multiply changes the repetition vertically of this pattern. Next I'm going to add a color ramp. Just place it right after this fraction. I'm going to change this to constant and we'll change that uh, top slider which is the white to 0.6. Next up I want to create some distortion further upstream of this texture here. So I'm going to use this noise texture, duplicate it and put it on this line here and we'll change this, um, we'll change this to 1. And then we'll bring this mix down here, put it uh, right after that noise texture and plug object into color 2 just like we did before. We're going to change this to 0.5 so that it's much bigger. We're going to actually duplicate this mix, change this mix option to subtract and we'll leave it at 0.5 there. And what that does is it kind of creates a di diagonal offset. This is just going to be one more parameter that we can adjust and get some different results in the end there. This color ramp output that I've got here it's actually going to be used for 
mixing these two wave textures together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control shift right click from one of these color ramps to the other and it sets up this nice mix RGB setup here and I can then plug this color ramp output into this input right here. We can see we've got something going on here but um, I kind of want some separation here as well. So I, I'm going to create a second mask and I'm going to do that by duplicating this multiply fraction and color ramp and just bringing it down here. I'm going to create a temporary mix RGB uh, just to kind of see what we're mixing together. If we move this down, for instance, we can see the influence of both of these color ramps. Uh, this darker area is this bottom one, and then the gray is this top one here. So I'm going to set this at 0.6, and we'll change this to, actually we'll leave it at white. We'll set another one here, we'll change this to white as well. We'll set this at 0.1. I'm going to click on this top flag and set another one so it's in the middle, and I'm going to change that to black, and we'll set that at 0.48. So we can now see there's this color ramp here which is just a black and white separator and this one here which is just going to be able to separate in between those separations. So we'll, he we'll see how that all works. I'm going to delete this guy here and duplicate this, make a second mix RGB, make sure that one's still plugged in there. And this is going to be plugged into this second part here. We'll then plug this mix RGB into color 2 on the second mix RGB, we'll change color to to white. Let's see what this looks like now. There we go, we got our tiger texture. Let's start setting this up into a group note here. I'm going to grab everything except for the material output and hit control G. We'll just create a group and now we have this new node, the group input node. So let's start setting that up. I want to make something that controls the distortion on both of these wave textures. So I'm just going to create a value node here temporarily plug these both into the distortion inputs on these wave nodes. I'm going to create a reroute and then plug this reroute uh, into this group input here. I guess I have to do it this way. Then we can rename this up here. And we'll just call this distortion. Let's get rid of this value node, tab out for a second, and change this distortion to 10. Tab in and let's change the default to 10 as well. Next, let's drag this phase offset on that second wave texture into this second area here. And let's rename this just simply offset. We'll leave that default value at 15, just as is. Next, let's insert this factor on this mix here, uh, just after this noise texture that's set to 40. We can change that to, um, let's call it fringe, because it kind of increases or decreases this roughness on the edge there. Next up, I'd like to create a scale parameter. I'm just going to do this a really simple way. I'm going to create a reroute right before this texture coordinate and duplicate the scale, put it right here. Then I'm just going to run this next group input node into that scale right there. And we can just leave it as it's titled there, scale. Next, let's create an offset for the mask. I'm going to create a reroute right before this reroute, which is right before uh, right after this reroute, pardon me, which is right before this noise with the scale set to 1. And I'm going to duplicate this scale and uh, put it right in here. And we'll change this to add. And then we'll run this right into the next input of that group and put there. We'll just name this one here mask offset. You can see that when we adjust these values here, it just offsets that, uh, you know, sawtooth pattern there that we've got. Even the z-axis gives different values because of the 3D noise. Next, let's set up the colors. I'm going to bring this group input closer to the end here. And let's duplicate this mix RGB, place it right afterwards, and make this connection going into the factor there. This first color, we're going to set this as black. That's going to be our stripe color. The second one is going to be white. So let's start by plugging in this stripe color to this next input, and then this color two is going to go in here. Let's name these. This first one is going to be stripe color, and this next one is going to be skin color. Lastly, let's set up a line thickness parameter, and to do that, I'm going to use these color ramps here. Uh, if we were using map range notes, it would be a little easier to set up but I just like these color ramps. There's a little bit more intuitive to look at. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a math node 
and just put it on this noodle right between the wave texture and the color ramp. We'll set it to subtract and to zero. And then we'll duplicate that and put it at the bottom there as well. Then we'll plug these into the next two available group input empty sockets there. Let's title this first one A lines thickness. And then this second one we'll just call B lines thickness. We could also set up a bunch of these other parameters too, like this scale or this subtract or any of these math notes down here uh, if you want. Make it as detailed as you want, but I'm pretty satisfied with this. If we tab out, we can see all our options here, and there's quite a bit to play around with. One thing you can do too, if you want the same skin color I had in the final render, you can come over to here where it says skin color, uh, click on that, click on the hex code, and just enter in CC721E. And there we go, we've got a nice orange tiger color skin. I'm just going to change this back to white for now and we'll set up our hair particles. I'm going to get rid of this shelf again and let's add a particle system. It's going to be set to hair. We'll set this at advanced. And we'll change the hair length to something much shorter, something like 0 0.02. Then let's enable rotation and change the randomized value to 0.1. Then we'll go to physics and we'll change this brownian to 0.003. Something really small, but something that'll make a bit of a difference there. So we can see our hair particles are already showing up on our plane there. Let's go down to render and actually we want hair shape. We'll change the diameter root to 0.1 and the tip to 0.1. And then we'll come up to we want to do some children. We'll do interpolated We'll set this something like 1000 to 1200. I'll try 1200. Uh, if it's a little slow for you, then you might want to turn it down a little bit there. Let's tap back into this node group. And let's add a, a principled BSDF and put it right after this mix RGB. We don't want this uh, color or this temp viewer input there. So let's create a third one that's this BSDF. Let's just get rid of them on the right here, those two extra ones. So if we tab out, we can see now it's uh, looking much better. Let's also change this from EV to Cycles and uh, we don't need to change the feature set but let's change it to GPU if you have access to that as well. I'm going to turn on these overlays for a second here. Go into Top View and hit Control Alt 0 on the number pad and that uh, just sets the current view to the, your camera view. I'm going to hit G and then Z twice and just drag the mouse back just to get uh, a nice kind of area where we've got the border of the object just above and below my camera frame. Then I'm going to click on the object, tab into edit mode, and just size along the x-axis until it just goes outside of the camera frame there as well. Tap back into object mode. We can see we've uh, kept the same dimensions of our texture but just increased the, uh, the width of it there. Let's render it out and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Here's the same texture using that orange color with the hex code that we looked at earlier. It's a little dark, so let's add a quick sky texture. Just come over here to the World Properties tab on the right, and this yellow circle here, let's just add a sky texture, which is just right here. Then let's turn this strength down to 0.2, something like that. Let's render that out and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks good. It looks kind of like a tiger carpet, but you could adjust the hair properties, the hair particle settings, and get different results with that. So that's it. I uh, hope you're able to follow along with everything I was doing. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments there and let me know if you have any suggestions for uh, future textures I could make as well. Thanks.